tell us where we are in your opinion and what some of the possibilities are. Just imagine the possibilities. Where are we now in the stuff? Are we at the end or are we at the I go. We are at the, I think, the very, very beginning of the way in which uh, advanced technology, information technology, is going to improve, um, potentially improve all of our lives. Okay? In, the, in the future, I think, we'll be able to go inside and access all these databases, some of them very macro. You know, uh, We can learn about history as it's being made or, or past, but we'll also be able to create databases about ourselves. We'll also be able to learn more about what we do every day and understand it, how we spend our time, what our diets are, uh, how we, how we um, uh, relate to other people in the sense of the communications we have with the outside world. There's great power in aggregating individual experiences, putting it together and then slicing it different ways. That's how you do policy analysis on the, on the federal or on the corporation level. We'll be able to do it as individuals. That'll be very exciting. You are the first younger the, And there'll be a lot of money made, <laughs> parenthetically. <laughs> Because uh, I think that, that an awful lot of people uh, are be, going to be going into uh, businesses, not just entertainment, uh, but a variety of businesses uh, that will be based on a computer and advanced technology. And there will just be an explosion. Just, I mean, there are an incredible number of things that can be done if you, if you put your mind to it. You're the first younger person we've met in, as you said, as you said yourself, we're dealing with all these senior philosophical types. Mm -hmm. You're the first one I can ask the question of, uh, does this excite you personally because everyone else won't be here? The guy's just saying, you know, I won't be here to see this. Uh, you are just about at the borderline, I assume, at the age that we'll see sure. these changes. And how do you feel about that personally? I mean, oh, I, I think it's very exciting. And I think it's, uh, it's a tremendous opportunity. You want to look for a house? You're going to move to, uh, to upstate Maine. Right. You look for a house, you key in what you're looking for, and it comes out, and you can either get a picture or a printout. Uh, you want to, uh, well, just about anything that involves choice across a broad range mm -hmm. right, can be put on a computer. And the, and the possibilities for that, I mean, when you say to me, you want a house, you can get a house, you want this, you can get that, that sounds nice. But there's a lot of people, the ecology third of the country, which I am not one, but I understand, uh, that feels, oh, but I don't want any of that, because that all costs more money, and it uses more raw materials. What about the level of human evolution? What about the idea that without these tools, for example, fusion power, well, look, weather... Look, com computers are, are tools, and like any other tools, they can be used well or badly. The potential for misuse is every bit as great as the potential for positive uh, use, and there's all sorts of evil that can be done. Uh, on a political front, um, uh, but uh, they are tools, and they can be used for good or ill. Sorry, you had a question. Good, terrific. Bureaucracy. Yeah. Um, one of the problems of government, one of the problems of all large organizations, uh, we'd like to know what part information technology has played in it as far as you see it, and what can be done about that. Is it, first of all, is it a problem? When you ask people about large organizations, the first thing they say in the street, if this survey has any value, it's our survey of 10, uh, bureaucracy. Well, I, th I think what bureaucracy is, is, is all, is, is, that's what a bureaucracy is. Um, what computers and associated advanced technology can do is to reduce the need for the, for the meaningless paper shuffling and to indeed reduce the number of people that are necessary to get something done. Is that what's going on okay. now? Well, is that needless well, paper shuffling going on? Oh, there, I, I, there's a tremendous amount of, of uh, paper shuffling going on now that needn't be done, both because we have advanced technology that could do it better, and because it needn't be done in the first place. Okay? Uh, and I, the, the merits of that, we can spend a half an hour well, on. Well, the reason I ask okay. is because, let's be honest, Medicaid, mm -hmm. Medicaid is one of those very specific things where my father, that's what he said. That's right. Medicare, Medicare. But let, let's be honest, because it's a, it's a good example. To the degree they've superimposed computers on the same old way of doing business. Instead of having 53 people shuffle a piece of paper, you get a big computer to shuffle the piece of paper. And since a computer moves so much more quickly than people do, you can now have not just 50 pieces of paper, but 500 pieces of paper because you just choose them up, right? Uh, filling out forms, getting them into the computers. Right what is the value of that? Talk in humanistic in, terms, the value In of human the terms, and a very good example, I think, is uh, some of the things we're trying to do to make sure that, uh, that we're not overpaying. Uh, it's a very difficult call uh, to determine whether a physician's fee for a given service is... Large organizations that have responsibility essentially for governing the country, either politically or economically, 
Well, there's a responsibility to be ethical in the way you use the information, and that transcends uh, private and public sector. There's a special responsibility about the, the confidentiality associated with some of the information. A Sears or a, or a large uh, bank can ruin someone's credit rating by virtue of, of the records they keep and the assumption that those records or the, or the um, story that those records would tell an outsider about those per that person, if indeed the record is inaccurate. If somewhere in Citibank or, or Dun & Bradstreet somebody's got a record that says that Leonard Schaefer uh, failed to pay his mortgage and skipped town, and I don't know about it because I don't know about it, there are millions of records about me that I know nothing about. Uh, and if that is used later, I, I personally feel that is the responsibility of that corporate uh, organization uh, to make sure I don't get hurt that way. So their responsibility is that they must be accurate. And those things that they keep on a confidential basis that I don't know about must be accurate. Now, some of those things I think cannot be kept confidential, and I must know about them. Uh, no, but a healthcare private corporation would have the same responsibility. I would hope so. I would hope so. Uh, but I think there are no corporations that I'm aware of uh, that are responsible to a segment of the population as vulnerable as the one that we have. The very poor in this country, the disabled uh, and the elderly. Uh, so I think we have a special responsibility. And our bottom line is not the trade-off between uh, profit or no profit. Our bottom line is are those individuals receiving the service. But yet you go into the big bureaucracy, one of our scenes is the Social Security. And you see a lot of just plain people whose bottom line doesn't look like they care about the service of people at all. Well, you're talking, I mean, there are a number of factors there. One is the size of the organization. They don't tell you yes or no. They tell you, here's what, here's the, here's what was fed into me. I aggregated it in the way you wanted it. What are you going to do about it? One of our problems, I think, is that very often we have the information, but we either don't understand it or we don't act on it. I think that's a big issue for bureaucracies. You know, it's all in the computer, but the people haven't. The, the people who are allegedly responsible for the organization haven't taken advantage of that information. And again, it's this process of feeding the computer as if, as if that machine had a life of its own. It's just a tool. You put information in it so it can be manipulated, and you do something with that information. It's also a function of design. If, you know, some of your biggest opponents probably are the very people who your organization reports to help, because those are the people who think that these kinds of technologies, and I'd like to know why that's so. I think that is so that the technologists of the world, they know damn well why this stuff is valuable, and the people on upper levels know why it's valuable. A lot of them do. Uh, I'm not sure that everybody does. I, I, I think there's a... on the a, lower level, yeah. they're still thinking about grass and trees and the oil crisis yeah. and blaming, in part, well, these technologies. There is a kind of generation gap in the sense I think that there is to any kind of new technology. I'm sure when automobiles first started hitting the streets, there are an awful lot of people who instinctively reacted negatively. Uh, and I think there are other analogies. Uh, I also think that, that uh, now computers, per se, don't make mistakes. I understand that. So what that happens is, 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 that, is that you fed something into this big machine and it came back wrong. And there's a sense to, of, of personalizing that, that, that the machine no, doesn't care. Slightly in the end, it's the liberal, caring, old-time, Rooseveltian, government, large government person who's going to be your enemy. Maybe. So right now, maybe. Right? Maybe today. But I'm That's telling you, 20 years from now, if that's still the case, it will be because uh, we have blown the opportunity. Because the opportunity is clearly there. But we've got to design better systems. We've got to design systems to get the information that's necessary to make the right decisions, in our case, about national policy, in the corporation's case, about the life of the corporation. Okay. And, and then we've got to get people that, learn how to, that know how to deal with the information that's presented to them. And that's very frightening parenthetically, to see, you know, all this information arrayed, good Lord, what do I do? Uh, and there is, a, there is human judgment and there is intuition. You don't just say, well, 20% here, 30% there, bingo, that's what I'm going to do. Computers don't make decisions. Data doesn't fall out. You still have to use intuition. You still have to use human judgment. But we have to have people under understand what advanced technology can do for us. We also have to aim it in the right direction. One of the big things that we're concerned about, we call beneficiary services, worrying about our beneficiaries, making sure they understand our programs. Large corporations are interested in customer service. Well, it turns out that advanced technology can help you discover what your customers or your beneficiaries' problems are and help you do something to, to, to resolve those problems. Um, you wanted to talk about fraud and abuse and the fact that the uh, 
you know, I've, wanna... I've made the case. I mean, okay, we, well, we... Well, well, Mark wants you to say very simply that the answer to the fraud and abuse problem lies in information technology. Rather than, Give it... well, how would you list what you'd like to see the government function? You're in it. we got a couple, we got about uh, two minutes of film time. How would you like to see things functioning? Right now, they don't appear to the average guy to be functioning very well. Governance is what I'm talking about in general. How should it be? How would you like it to be? How do you hope it is in, your, in the time you're here? Well, I think that this country has made an amazing and, a, and historic commitment to helping the less fortunate members of our society. If, if we wanted to have a buddy system, we've got 46 million beneficiaries, it means we'd have to have 46 million employees. And, and that, that is obviously crazy. That is gone it's, it, is, it is gone. Now, we can, though, in a funny way, turn back the clock by delegating to technology, to machinery, the drudgery and all the old um, tasks that, that for